But uh, all right, let's let's get into this quarterback thing. So yeah, I want to talk I, about the sugar huddle a little bit. Okay. Do you know anything about that? Hmm. I mean, it is a staple yeah. of Andy Kotelnicki's offense. It is when you have the quarterback behind, kind of in a circle yeah, I know. of all these guys, yeah. and they break super quickly yes. to a oh, uh, up tempo, an offset line. It's a line where you're trying to confuse the defense to which guys are eligible and which guys are ineligible. The goal is to get a linebacker lined up on an ineligible receiver. So then you have a yeah. wide open receiver that is eligible on the other side. Yeah. That is the goal. There's a lot of bootlegs out of this. There is a lot of misdirection handoffs. There's a lot of different interesting things that you can do out of this. Go watch Kansas highlights from the sugar huddle from like the last season or two. This isn't Lance Leopold. This is Andy Kotelnicki's thing. All right. Okay. The, the sugar huddle. I don't know how this fits into Big Ten offenses. Because traditionally, the Big Ten is, all right, we're going to sit in a normal huddle. We're going to get to our line. We're going to sit there for 100 yeah. seconds, you know, yeah. wait for the whole play clock, then hike the ball and do a running back draw. You yeah. know? <laughs> well, here's, here's, here's what I think is fascinating about this. We got to keep in mind when we're talking about the Big Ten that the Big Ten's about to change. Yes. With the four Pac-12 teams coming in. Big Ten football, as we know it, is likely about to morph a little bit. I'm also really interested to see how the two teams were with the wide receivers. Because you think about it, that first team, Fleming, KLS, and probably Trey. Probably. Will be working with Aller most of the time. Yeah. Which I'm really excited to see how Aller and Fleming do together as a duo. And then, because uh, I talked about it last week, Fleming has to be a true number one wide receiver if our offense is going to go to the next level where we want it to be. He can't just come in and be a two guy and have KLS be the top guy again. Because that's exactly what Tante Cephas was. That doesn't exactly. do Penn State any good. Yeah. Um, and Fleming is way more talented than Cephas, honestly. Yeah. Um, but then on that second group, you're looking at like Amari Evans and Liam Clifford and guys. Whoever gets Amari Evans, I think is going to win the blue white game. <laughs> that's probably going to be Bo on that second team. He, he very so. well might. Yeah. I think I. I think he's criminally underrated. I've and, said and, uh, that so many times on this show, but I digress. I'm um, blanking on his name. The Florida Jayden State trainer, Malik McLean. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, yeah. So it would probably be Evans, Malik McLean, and Saunders with Propula. And then maybe uh, Liam Clifford in that group as well. Yeah. 